Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at an application called Castero. Castero is a terminal-based application which will allow you to listen to podcasts on your computer. Now, I'm not sure how useful this app will be for most people because most people probably listen to their podcasts on the go on their phone. Uh, but if you want to listen to your podcast on your computer, Castero is a good option because it's very, very simple. So there's not a ton of extra frills, not a ton of extra features. It just takes a podcast feed and displays it in a library that you create and allows you to play them and manage them in certain ways. There's no podcast store. There's no plugin support. There's nothing fancy about it at all. It's just an application written in Python that is very good at what it does. So you could say it follows the Unix philosophy. Let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at this app. Now, in order to install Castero, you can do so in two ways. You can use pip3, which is the Python installer. So you just do pip3 install Castero. Now, that obviously will only work if you have pip3 installed, and you can install that from the AUR. I would recommend installing it because a lot of Python applications can only be installed in this way or are easier to be kept updated in this way. But if you're on Arch Linux... As is per usual, you can install this from the AUR by doing yay-s castero, and it will install just like normal. Now, you can obviously use Paru or whatever in order to install it. Whatever AUR helper you're using, it's in the AUR, you can install it that way. So I've already done this, so I don't need to do it again. So first, let's take a look at the application itself. So in order to enter it, you just go ahead and type in castero and hit enter, and then this is what it looks like. Now... As far as I can tell, it does take some colors from your terminal. Uh, so this may not be what it looks like for you. And you will not have any podcasts to begin with. I've added a few. So you'll just get a blank screen with three columns. That's all you'll get. So the first thing I should cover is how to add a podcast feed. You hit the letter A, and then you'll go through and enter the feed. So I'm going to enter the feed for Linux Unplugged, which is already here, but it doesn't really matter. We'll just go ahead and enter that, and then you hit enter, and it would add it. Now, if you hit control C, obviously that just quits the program, uh, which is a little weird, but because it's running as a like a command in that way, it's not something you'd really expect. Usually, you'd hit Q and it quit, and it, which it does, uh, but so control C to quit or Q to quit. Uh, now, to move around in the application, you can do so with the uh, arrow keys. Now you cannot use the Vim keys, sadly, because they're used for other things. And I have not seen any way of actually remapping those things. I haven't been through the entire configuration file, but in the 250 lines that I went through, which are mostly comments, I didn't see a way to remap them. There, it's possible that there is, and I just don't know about it. But if you're dead set on using the Vim keys because you think that the arrow keys are the children of Satan, I'm sorry, you're just going to have to get over it. That's just the way it is. Anyways, the arrow keys up and down <laughs> uh, to go up and down in the column. The right arrow key to get to the next column, and you can go up and down, and then the left key to go back. That's how it is. Now, there are four views in Castero. The first one is this one you see here. It lists your feeds and your episodes and the metadata. View number two is the queue uh, for your podcast. Uh, you can go through and add a whole bunch of episodes to a queue. You can do so if you're back on view number one. You can add a, a episode to your queue by hitting, by selecting the episode and then hitting the space bar. So if we now we go to view number two, we now have two in the queue. So that's really cool. Uh, view number three is a view for just the feeds and the episodes. It doesn't show the metadata. And view number four is your downloaded episodes. And this is where you would manage your downloads. Uh, you can delete them or whatever. So let's go back to view number one. So we've talked about adding a feed. We've talked about navigating. We've talked about adding to a queue. The next thing we should talk about is playing, right? So if you want to play an episode, you just highlight it and hit enter. And it would start playing. And as you can see up here, it shows the title of the episode you're playing, the volume, and the play, the, the timestamp. In order to pause, you'd hit P or K, and that would just pause it, or you know, at least it's supposed to pause it, and it did. It just takes a little while. Now, that's one thing I've noticed about it is that the reaction times to key presses can be a little slow. I'm not sure why that is. It seems like it would go through and be fairly instantaneous, but it's not. 
So that's something that you'll have to just keep in mind. It's not the fastest application that I've seen. For whatever reason, there's just a little bit of delay. So if you hit P again, it'll actually start playing again. And there's just a little bit of a delay there. I'm not sure what that's all about. But for the most part, that's what Castero is. There's no frills. Now, there are a few other things that you can see from the help page. Uh, D to remove a selected feed. R to reload your feed, so that would refresh all your feeds in that you've added, or capital R to just the selected feed. I think I'd want those reversed, but uh, that's just the way it seems to be. Uh, S will save the episode for offline pay playback, so that means that it will download it to, I think it's that local dash share dash slash uh, Castero. I can't remember if that's the actual thing. It's in the, if we go to the documentation here yeah it's dot local dash share dash castero i cannot talk for the damn today i'm sorry about that uh so you can actually go there and you know if you have to delete the applications manually by going there now i talked about the up right left right page up and page down things that's just navigating between the episodes and stuff uh, space again adds it to your queue c will clear the queue z will clear the progress of the selected episode and we'll go to the next episode in the queue. I will invert the order of the menu. So I'm not actually sure what that does. Oh, it, it just sorts the episodes the opposite direction. So instead of starting an episode, the most recent, it goes to the, the first one. So interestingly enough, we could pay, play the first episode of the of Linux Unplugged. I wonder. So the first episode... Uh, see, it only... Yeah, and, and that sort maintained is consistent with, as you navigate between the um, your feeds so that you don't have to go through an eye every time. So uh, the first feed, first episode in our feed is actually Linux cast number four. I don't know where the first three are. I couldn't tell you. Those are the lost episodes. I should probably find them. Uh, they're probably scared and lonely somewhere. But anyways, um, slash will filter the contents of the menu. So that's going to be, that's a Vim key binding right there. Why I couldn't use the rest of the key binding, I don't know. Mark will mark the episodes as played or unplayed. P or K will play or pause. F or J seek forward. B and J to seek backwards. Uh, and then this one here is for bot volume. Uh, the brackets for increase or decrease playback speed. So it will actually go through and play faster or slower, which is cool. You can see the episode URL by pressing U. And then the numbers 1 through 4 will switch the views. And that's literally all there is. Now, let's take a small, brief, quick look at... Small, quick, brief look. Seriously, Matt, what the hell? <laughs> let's take a brief look at the configuration file. So, the configuration file is in the Kadot config file in, on your computer and in Castero. And then if we do an ls, we'll see that we have castero.conf here. So, we just... Type that in, and really the configuration file is very, very simple. It's written kind of like what you would expect, uh, like polybars kind of in, is written in this way. A lot of Python configuration files kind of look like this because they're translation layers to actual Python code. So. Uh, it allows you to restrict memory usage if you're if the thing is using too much you know memory. You can toggle the delete feed clear confirmation. Relo the reload f feeds threshold is set to ten, so that means that after ten episodes, or after ten feeds, it will actually go through and prompt you to what to um, whether or not you want to reload those things, and you can actually increase that so it doesn't bother you if you have a whole bunch of feeds. Uh, there's several, like I said, there's several things here that you can go through and change. Um, the, probably the most interesting things you can change, you can do, if you subscribe to video podcasts, which it does handle fairly well, you can select the default uh, video player, so MPV or VLC. I have both installed, so really it doesn't really matter which one it uses. They're both good. It has proxy stuff, which probably you'll never use. The reload on start is probably something that I would change to true. That way it would reload all my feeds every time I started. You can also change the download directory, which is really good. I'm probably, if I continue to use this, I'll probably change that because that way I don't have to hunt for the download things every time I want to find them, if I want to find them. Uh, and here's where the colors, so you can go through and uh, change the colors of the application, which is great because I, I, you know, me and my rising, I'll probably go through and do that. And then there's a whole bunch of playback stuff. Now, 
Oh, see, I would, I probably should have gone through the entire configuration file first. You can go through and remap the, the keys. So if you wanted to go through and use the Vim keys, you could go through and rebind all the keys in order to do so. That's really great. So that totally changed my opinion of Castero because I was really kind of bummed that you couldn't do that. I probably should check first. Um, so that's really cool. So that's the configuration file. There's not a lot to it. There's about 300 lines. Probably 240 of them are comments. So that's Castero. There's not much more to it. And it's really good. Um, I'm even more happy with it now than I was before, knowing that you can actually, you know, reconfigure the keys. And that's something that I'm definitely going to do because I'm so, so attached to the Vim keys. So let me know in the comments below if you're interested in using this app or if you have a different solution for listening to your podcasts on your computer. I'd love to hear about them. Um, make sure you follow us on Twitter at the Linux Cast. You can follow us on Facebook at the Linux Cast, and you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. And with that in mind, I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons, Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Merrick, and Camp, and Mitchell, which for some reason isn't he, he hasn't made the list. Uh, I edited it. I don't know why it's not there. I don't understand. Gimp, you have failed me. Anyways, thanks, all everybody, for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.